Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's Free CompTIA A Plus Certification Training Course on Other System Tools. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to go through the requirements of our Practical Application Exam, our 22702, Section 2.3. And these are a number of system utilities and tools that are very handy, but they don't go into any of the categories we've looked at already. We have System Information, System Restore, the Remote Desktop Protocol. We'll do some remote desktop in this particular module, the Task Scheduler, and we'll look at regional settings and language settings. Let's start with system information. If you've not seen this before, then you're really missing out on a wealth of information that you can gather about what's inside your computer. You can find this under All Programs, Accessories, System Tools, and system information. If you're at the command line, you can type msinfo32, and it will bring up exactly the same thing. Let's look at our system information. I'm going to go to my All Programs. Under my Accessories, there are inside of that a System Tools folder. And my system information is right inside of there. So here's our system information screen. I'm going to maximize this because there's a lot here. We have a system summary view that shows us all of the information about this particular computer. We also have a software environment, components, and hardware resources. And then we have other settings underneath there that also expand out. But look at this wealth of information. If we wanted to know what the IRQs were inside of our computer. We can simply click IRQs, and it will fill out exactly the information in our system. If we want to know more about the sound device, we can click Sound Device. So if you're in a situation where you've just sat down in front of a computer, you're ready to troubleshoot, but you're not exactly sure how much memory is in this machine and what kind of video driver or video card it has, or how much memory is on the video card, and you're looking to gather more information about the hardware, you can go right to this system information utility to get all of that info. System Restore is a great utility. I've used this a number of times because what this allows us to do is to go back in time and fix a problem that we may have created for ourselves. Specifically, what this does is when you install new applications or you perform particular functions in the operating system, it creates a restore point. You may have seen this if you're installing some new software. It actually may say in the installation process, we are setting a, uh, one of the restore points right here. And then it will continue with the installation of the software. That way, if there is a problem afterwards, you can go back to the System Restore utility and rewind your system, if you will, back to a previous point. In Windows XP, you'd get to this through the Control Panel. Under the System Options, there's an option for System Restore. And in Windows Vista, you go to All Programs, Accessories, System Tools, and System Restore. Now, one thing to keep in mind is this does not guarantee that you'll be able to rewind after you get a malware or virus infestation, because the viruses these days are smart enough to go back to a previous restore point and also infect all of those. So it's not a guarantee that you can recover from a virus, but certainly can help you recover from a bad driver that's been installed or some bad software that's been installed. Let's open up this the System Restore in our Windows Vista under All Programs. It is in your Accessories. It is in the System Tools. There it is. And we have our System Restore right there. The System Restore will ask you for permission to continue if you're using user account control. And once you provide it with that permission, it's going to give you a view that says, here's where you can fix some of these problems that you're having. If you want to create a restore point right now, let's say you'd like to be sure that we would be able to rewind to this point, and you'd like to manually set a restore point, it gives you an option to do that right in this screen. I'm going to continue, though. We'll click Next, and it says, where, where would you like to restore from? And this particular computer, I only have a single restore point on here. It's something that is a brand new computer that I've created. And so there aren't a lot to choose from there. But we could certainly choose any of the previous restore points we have on our computer and then tell the computer we'd like to restore from that particular point. Click it, and once you confirm it, it will finish. It will then tell you to reboot your system, and then you'll be back to where you were at that particular restore point. If you have a lot of space on your computer where you've saved a lot of different restore points, you could really take the configuration back of your computer for weeks or even months back to a very early configuration. Uh, one of the things that's nice about the restore point functionality, though, is that it only has a certain amount of disk space that it allocates to this. So you're never going to fill up your hard drive with restore points. You'll always have the right amount of restore points. And as you add new restore points, the old ones are deleted. 
Another place you can go to look at restore points is in your control panel under your system option. Let's move down here to our system. And inside of the system option, you've got the normal things that you would expect to see. But you have these other settings along here too, things like system protection. And we'll continue. The system protection view brings up that same restore point capability. In this case, I can do that system restore to a certain point. I can see the restore points on the disk. And there's the option to create one. So there's a couple of different ways to do this. This is one way that's very similar to how you'd also do it in Windows XP. So you have a lot of different ways to get to exactly the same place. Another extremely useful utility to have is the remote desktop connection. I use this functionality all the time because what this allows me to do is control another person's machine over the network. I may not even be anywhere near that particular device. It may be in another state, another country, but I'd still be able to access it from my desktop. It really doesn't matter where it is as long as it's connected to the network. You may have to check your firewall settings that are within Windows and even firewalls that may be out between you and the other device and make sure that those firewalls do allow the remote desktop protocol to move between them. But obviously, just thinking about this, you don't have to leave your desk get in the car, drive to another building just to fix a small problem someone might be having. This could save you an enormous amount of time. Let's see how it works. You'll find the remote desktop connection in your All Programs. We're going to go to our Accessories folder, and right in there is the remote desktop connection. You've got a number of options available to you. I have a machine that I'm connecting to out on my network. That's a 192.168.0.12 IP address. The username I've already got configured in here. It's one of my lab machines. And here's my the name of the computer with a backslash and the name of the user that I'm logging in as. Happens to be the same user on this machine as it is that one. But it could be a different set of credentials. You could save those credentials here. I'm not going to do that. You've got other options here, though, for setting how the display looks. Maybe you'd like it to be full screen. Maybe we'll make it a little bit smaller than what we're running here. We'll run it at 800 by 600. Just so you can see the difference. I'm running Windows Vista here, but I'm going to be connecting to a machine that is not running Windows Vista. So now that we have that information in here, let's click Connect and see what happens. Well, we've got a screen that pops up, and I've got a logon prompt for that machine. And then you'll notice it's a Windows XP machine. If I put in the right password here, it will now start up the desktop for that machine. And there it is. Now I'm on that remote device, I can do all of the things that you could expect to do on that remote device all from this remote desktop. Even though I'm running any operating system here, I'm connecting via that remote desktop to this Windows XP machine. And now I can resolve their problem. I can install new software. I can make operating system changes or anything else just as if you were sitting right in front of it. There may be things that you would like to have happen in your operating system at very specific times. Maybe once a week, you'd like to do a disk cleanup. Maybe you'd like to be sure that your defragmentation is running every day. Or maybe you'd like to change that to be every week. You have some different options for being able to do that. And you can do all of it inside of the task scheduler. From here, you can find this at the Start, All Programs, Accessories, System Tools, and Scheduled Tasks. And that will bring you up to the task scheduler. These will run programs automatically for you. You don't even have to think about it. You put it into your task scheduler, and it will run that every time. This can also do application updates. Maybe you want to do automated file transfers. Maybe you just want to be sure that your weekly disk management is done. And we can go into our task scheduler and either add or modify any one of those jobs. You'll find the task scheduler in your accessories. So let's go to our All Programs. Under Accessories, this is a system tool. And inside of the system tool is the task scheduler. So let's choose that. And Windows needs our permission to continue. That sounds fine to me. And it'll bring up our task scheduler screen where we can now start looking at what is already scheduled. And then if we'd like to, we can add other things to the scheduler itself. Let's look at our task scheduler library. You can see what tasks we have that are in the last 24 hours. There's quite a few things that are running in our system. Let's maximize this so it looks a little bit better. There are 30. 30 different tasks in here by default. Four are currently running. 15 have succeeded. 11 have stopped. And we can start to see all of the different options. Now, I have not added any of these 
into my Windows Vista. It, these are things that are automatically added with the default configuration of Windows Vista. But in here, I'm now able to do different things to this mix. I'm able to see what's active. Here's some things that are at, currently enabled and that have not expired. And if you'd like, you can create some tasks yourself. Maybe there's a basic task that you'd like to add to do some other things in your computer. There are tasks that you can add and have it create for you different triggers or actions or finishes. Or maybe you know exactly the task that you would like to use. You can put a name associated with that, have it run as a particular user on this machine, and have it always running at a particular time and date. The task scheduler normally is something that you would very have a very specific need for. There is a program you've added that always needs to be able to run this particular task. Or maybe there are particular tasks already running that you would not like to run. You can always go up to these tasks and modify the configuration of those. If you wanted to get more details on what's currently running or modify some of those pieces, you can find it all in the task scheduler. Windows is an operating system that is used all over the world. And even if you're in the same country, there can sometimes be differences between dialects or different types of keyboards or even different languages. Well, fortunately, Windows has thought of that. And you can make modifications to the operating system and how it interprets different currencies and different times and different dates through the regional settings options. In Windows XP and Vista, you'll find this in your control panel. There will be an applet there for regional and language options. And from there, you can modify quite a few different options. We can find our regional language settings under our control panel. And there's an applet there for regional and language options. And you can see you've got quite a bit here. And obviously, it makes sense because in every region, you have a different way to look at money or to tell time or to display the date. And you can pull up a pull down list that you can modify so that it just changed to exactly where you happen to be. You can also change the overall location. Sometimes Windows will give you news and weather in some of its applets, and you can specify the country you happen to be in. If you're in a country where it's a different keyboard layout, or maybe even a different language, it may be a very different keyboard, you can modify those under the Keyboards and Languages tab. And lastly, you can change some of the administrative functions here. Certain applications need to be able to use the language on your computer in a certain way. And you may want to take the settings you have and move them to other users that are also using this computer so they use it the same way that you might. Let's see what we've learned about some of these other system tools. Our first question is, how can you launch system information from the command line? There was a command line prompt there. We didn't use it in this module, but I showed you that it was the msinfo32 option that would open up that system information screen. The next question is, which utility can provide access to another computer across the network? We were sitting in one place, and we were able to log on to another computer because we were using the remote desktop connection. And the last question, what Windows feature can modify the operating system keyboard and language? It was right there in our control panel, and it was the regional and language options. That covers the requirements we needed for this 22702 section 2.3, where we've gone through system information, system restore, the remote desktop protocol, task scheduler, and our regional language settings. If you'd like to watch any of our absolutely free a videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards or send me a message, you can visit our website at freeaplus.com.